Good morning, and thank you for joining me today. I'm Pastor Sean, and it's Tuesday, July 21st, and this is your morning prayer to start your day. So let us begin. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Give glory to God, our light and our life. O come, let us worship him. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Give glory to God, our light and our life. O come, let us worship him. Our text today uh, take, uh, picks up where we left off yesterday with Acts 16, verses 23 through 40. And when they had inflicted many blows upon them, they threw them into prison, ordering the jailer to keep them safely. Having received this order, he put them into the inner prison and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's bonds were unfastened. When the jailer woke and saw that the prison doors were open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, supposing that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul cried with a loud voice, Do not harm yourself, for we are all here. And the jailer called for lights and rushed in, and trembling with fear, he fell down before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. And they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. And he took them in the same hour of the night and washed their wounds, and he was baptized at once, he and, his, and all his family. And he brought them up to his house and set food before them. And he rejoiced along with his entire household that he had believed in God. But when it was day, the magistrate sent the police, saying, Let those men go. And the jailer reported these words to Paul, saying, The magistrates have sent to let you go. Therefore come out now and go in peace. But Paul said to them, They have beaten us publicly, uncondemned, men who are Roman citizens, and have thrown us into prison. And do they now throw us out secretly? No, let them come themselves and take us out. The police reported these words to the magistrates, and they were afraid when they heard that they were Roman citizens. So they came and apologized to them, and they took them out and asked them to leave the city. So they went out of the prison and visited Lydia, who, uh, when they, and when they had seen the brothers, they encouraged them and departed. In many various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets, but now in these last days, he's spoken to us by his son. So this is... Um, immediately follows what happens when they're walking around and a, 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 a slave girl who has the gift of divination um, is following them, calling them out, um, and basically being kind of a, a nuisance. And uh, he, Paul calls out this whatever spirit is inhabiting her, this unclean spirit. And uh, the owner of, this, of the slave girl gets upset because he was making money off of her. So they get thrown into prison. And that's where we get today. And um, obviously the the huge thing here is is the jailer who comes to faith. And they're, they're singing hymns and, and all the prisoners are listening to them. And then there's a great earthquake and, and the doors, all the doors were opened and everybody's bonds were unfastened. Now the, the jailer is about to kill himself because the idea is that um, if... If he um, had any of the prisoners escape, then the one who let them escape would suffer the the same punishment as them. So basically, he he'd either you know be sent to prison for whatever, or if they were going to be executed, then he'd be executed. So this is this is not a good situation for him. So he figures, I'm just going to kill myself and and be done with it. And of course, Paul uh, says, no, don't don't harm yourself. We're we're all here. Um. Now the interesting thing, one of the interesting things that that um, that I find here is that um, 
you know, it, the, the context seems to be that all the prisoners stayed because we, 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 the, the, the text isn't exactly clear. Um, I mean, it, it kind of is, but it's, it, it's, it's not immediately clear. Um, but he says all the doors of the prison are thrown open. All the bonds were fastened. So everyone's not just Paul and Silas, but everyone, all the prisoners who were there. Um, and when he says, um, don't harm yourself, he says, um, we are all here. You know, he doesn't just say both of us, you know, Paul and, or Silas and me are here, just us two. He says, we're all here. So nobody left, even though they had a perfect escape. And we do see that the, the prisoners were listening to the hymns that Paul and Silas were uh, singing. So it's quite remarkable then that, um, you know, not only does um, this episode kind of, well, I mean, clearly change the heart of the jailer and his family, but there's a, maybe a little bit of implication here that the um, the prisoners, you know, maybe they were Christians, you know, maybe maybe they were, um, maybe they were Christians, so that's why they stayed. But if not, then there was something compelling about Paul and Silas, about their hymns, about the supernatural um, events that, that just occurred that kept them there too. But uh, this is also kind of a um, a redoing of the theme that we had yesterday. Um, and actually, this may be even a little bit clearer about how we do things for um, for the love of the neighbor. So, you know, Paul and Silas, when, when the earthquake happens and all the doors are open, they could have um, seen this, all, all these goings on and said, okay, well, God is giving us a way out. Good, let's take it and let's go. Um, because they would, I mean, they could have. They had the freedom to do so. God had clearly released them. However, they also knew what the plight of the jailer would be and that this would lead him to suffer um, their fate, essentially, if, if, if they escaped. So in their Christian freedom, they chose to stay and to um, keep the jailer from killing himself, uh, which then led him to faith. So again, we, we always want to use our Christian freedom uh, never for our own personal gain. You know, it, it, it's always to be in loving service to our neighbor. You know, to, to those who we have um, responsibilities to, uh, to those who come into our lives. And, you know, we definitely look, we're, we're able to use our brains and, and our common sense to say, well, in this situation, who, who do I have the most responsibility to? You know, so if, if I was to go, um, you know, if I had my, my mortgage payment, you know, and, and I passed by somebody who, who needed some money, you know, on the street. I mean, I could say, well, Jesus says, give everything away. So I can just hand over my mortgage payment and say, there you go, dude. This could, this might change your life. Could do that. However, in doing that, then my family would not have a roof over their head. <laughs> so the people that I have the closest responsibility to would suffer in that case. Um, and so uh, we are guided by this law of of love that, um, you know, again, I think I pretty much said this yesterday, but if you ever have a, a question about what you should do in a situation, ask yourself, what is going to love and serve them the most? And it's not just a love and service in terms of, you know, what's going to make them, you know, happiest or what's the, the nicest thing I can do for them. Because sometimes the, the most loving thing you can do is to withhold something. You know, if, 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 if affirming, giving, um, embracing, whatever is actually going to harm them in the end, then that's not the loving thing to do. Um, you know, it's kind of like when you're raising children and sometimes you have to, um, rebuke them, um, not allow them to have things. <laughs> I know this well. Uh, and that is the loving thing, even though they would probably disagree at times, but, um, it's, it's always going to be based on your context, based on your situation, based on who is around you, based on who um, you have an obligation to, what your vocation is in relation to all this stuff. So it's it's not always cut and dry. However, um, your conscience is not burdened whenever you are basing your decisions on love and serve your neighbor. And that's what we see Paul and Silas doing here. Their love and concern for the jailer, 
defined their path. All right, well, let us pray. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, you've safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all of our doings, being ordered by your governance, may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting in his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty, merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. All right, well, thank you again for joining me, and uh, we will catch you tomorrow. Peace be with you.